What's up everyone, how's it going? Dave here from DaveMaraPhotography.com. Today I'm going to show you how to take a group of images, in this case 80 photos, which are taken over an elapsed time at Crater Lake National Park, and turn each of these 80 photos into one single star trail photo. So if you look at these photos here on my screen, you can see they're all still frame shots. And you can learn how to take these shots by purchasing my Photograph the Night Sky ebook or checking out my free Star Trails photography tutorial. I'll link both of those below this video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm in Lightroom here, and the first thing I'm going to do is just get a nice little baseline for one of these images. I'm going to post-process one of these images, and then I'm going to sync the rest to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just brighten this image up a little bit so I can see it pretty well. And I'll just turn the temp and temperature. The next thing I'm going to do is actually crop this bottom part off because I don't think it's really helping out the photo at all. So I'll just crop that off and bring that over. And remember, we're just going to sync the rest of these photos to match this one. So you really only need to process one photo, and then Lightroom will do the rest of the legwork work for you. So we'll brighten that up a little bit. I'm going to bring the highlights down and bring the whites up just to make those stars pop out. And I'll also bring the shadows up. The other thing I'm going to do is turn on my profile correction. And that'll take the wide angle distortion out of my lens and remove chromatic aberration as well. Then I'll just go back up here and I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation. And I'm going to add some more magenta tint to this one. I think that looks pretty good. That should work for us. And you can take longer to do this if you like. I'm just doing it quickly so I can show you the actual process of creating the star trails. So now that we have that image already in Lightroom, what we can do is select this image and then we can hit Command A and select the rest of the images. And I'm on a Mac, so that'd be Control A on a PC. And now we can just go over here to this Sync button, click Sync, and we'll want to hit Check All and Synchronize. Now you can see that all those photos match the first photo that we processed. And if you scroll through these, you can see that the photo stays the same, but the stars move in the sky a little bit. So that'll help us to create these star trails within Photoshop. So now what we're going to do is export all these photos. So to do so, I'm going to click Command A to select all the photos, that'd be Control A on a PC, and then I'll just right click on one of the photos and go to export, and this is going to export all these photos. So I just want to export them to a file, and I'm going to set that file on my desktop. So we'll just do a file on my desktop, and I'm going to call it Star Trails Tutorial. Because you don't want all those files just sitting out randomly on your desktop. And next, you can pick your file settings, your image format settings. Usually, I'd use TIFF, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use JPEG, so it'll go pretty quickly. And I'll just use 1,000 long edge as 1,000 pixels. And that'll just let me export them real quickly so we can get on with the tutorial. But normally, I would use a full-size TIFF file and just wait for it to go. So now I'm going to hit Export, and that's going to export all these photos that are sitting right here to my desktop. And you can see it going up here, Export 80 Files. So as soon as those are done, we're going to jump into Photoshop and we're going to blend those together. So now that all those files are done exporting in Lightroom, I've gone ahead and opened Adobe Bridge, and then I've opened the folder which contained all those files that I exported. And now that I'm within this folder, I can click Command A again and select all the files. And you can see that they're all selected here. The next thing I want to do is go up to Tools in the Adobe Bridge drop-down menu, and then I'll go to Photoshop and Load Files into Photoshop Layers. So this will layer all the files one on top of each other in a PSD file within Photoshop. So once your files are all loaded up into Photoshop, as you can see mine are over here on the right hand side, I'm going to select the top file, and then I'm going to hold down shift and scroll all the way down to the bottom file, and I'm going to click on that bottom file as well. And you'll see that all the intermediate files have been selected. So what I'm going to do here is line all these layers up. Just in case my tripod moved or something was a little bit off when I was taking these photos, using this function within Photoshop will line these files back up so you don't get weird overlaps when you're blending them together. So I'm going to go down here in the Edit drop-down menu to Auto Align Layers, and I'm going to select that. I'm going to click Auto, and then OK. Now Photoshop's going to go ahead and compare the pixels of these images and line them up for me. Now that Photoshop has gone ahead and lined up all our layers, we can go ahead and blend these photos together. There's a real simple way to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is just click on your top layer to make sure all your layers are unselected. Now with all your layers unselected, once again you want to click on that top layer, and then you're going to hold down Shift, and we're going to scroll back down to the very bottom, but we're going to select the layer that's second to the very bottom, so right here. You don't want to select the very bottom layer. So once you've selected that layer that's second to the very bottom, you can go up here to Blend Modes, and then you can go to Lighten. Now Lighten Blend Mode is going to look at each layer and blend whatever the lightest part of that layer is through. 
So you'll see the stars are all blended through for each layer. Now that the stars are all blended through, you can also see that it added a bunch of extra light here in the bottom of this photo, and I don't really want that in my photo. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and group all these images right here that I've already pre-selected. So I can go up here to layer, group layers, and that'll just group those all. And we'll just label this star trails. So I'll double click it and label it star trails. Now I'm going to create a layer mask over this layer and I'll show you why. So if I create a layer mask over this layer and then grab my black brush and I want to click B to grab my brush, I want to make sure it's at opacity 100 and flow 100. I'll just mask over this and mask in that lake that's underneath it. So that'll take all those little nasty light objects out of the bottom of the photo. Now there's also all these other streaks within your photo. So if you want to clean those up, what you can do is make a new mask up here, or a new layer I should say. And then you can just click your stamp tool. And then this takes some time, but you have to actually go in here and you can stamp out each one of these little lines if you want. Now some people like to do this, some don't. It just takes a lot of time. So if you wanted to do that, that's the way you could do it. So you could easily go through there and clone out each one of those little lines. They wouldn't be in your photo. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that section. You could also clone out stuff like this that's left over. And maybe that little blob of light right there. And some of these blobs of light too. And you can get as picky as you want by cloning all that stuff out as well. But when you're finally done, you can go ahead and click this top layer. And then you can click the bottom layer while holding shift. And you can merge them down. And that'd be your final Star Trails image. And this is where you could actually start post-processing it. So that's just the blending of your Star Trails. So at this point, I'd probably take another one to two hours and actually post-process this image and get the whole thing to look really nice within Photoshop. So hopefully you've learned some quick tips and tricks from my Star Trails blending tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below the video. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.